Well, I want to do a quick video to show you another project I'm working on here. Kind of creep through the woods here and show you a new toy that I bought. I don't know, it's probably been a month and a half, two months ago now. I picked up this old 1988 Link Belt LS2800C excavator. I think it's around 45, 47,000 pound machine. And, um, you know, to the naked eye, it's a little, little worse for the wear. But if you look at some of the details, you'll realize this is an unbelievable machine, especially for what it is. I'll start off by saying I got an unbelievable deal on this. I mean, an unheard of deal. I'm not going to tell you what I got it for because you'll think I actually stole it. But let's put it this way. He could have gotten more if he scrapped it than by selling it to me. Start off, uh, it's a 1988, so it certainly isn't new, but uh, I'm finding that these old machines have certain features that are really to be desired. He recently replaced all the shoes here on the track. I mean, these here are, are worth some serious money, and uh, they're worth more on the machine than they are off the machine, but in a worst case scenario, he could have just scrapped these things. They're unbelievable. The undercarriage um, has some positive features and some negative features. One of the chains is very badly worn, but it's still usable, especially in the applications that I plan to use it in. Um, the sprockets are in very good shape. They were recently replaced. And uh, the other chain is in very, very good shape. Now I'm gonna start off by telling you what was wrong with this machine when I got it. And the guy was that I bought it from was very honest, very forthcoming. He told me everything that he knew that was wrong with it. He owned it for 15 years. Um, it wouldn't idle high at all. You couldn't you couldn't throttle the engine up. It would um, bog down like crazy, and would throw a lot of black s smoke out of the smokestack. So to me, that said, it was either bad injectors, dirty injectors, or a bad turbo. And just by visually inspecting the turbo, I could see that it was totally failed. Um, the fans were totally seized up, and it was doing nothing. So I knew at a very minimum that that needed to get resolved. The other issue that was wrong with it is the track adjuster um, grease fittings were totally failed, so it wasn't holding grease, so the tracks were sagging very, very badly. Um, I think it's like an 11 millimeter grease fitting, which for some reason in my area I had a very hard time finding them, but I was able to secure them from MB Tractor and Equipment. My good friend Mark owns the company and he has basically everything you could possibly need in stock um, at all times, so that was that was great. I was able to get those grease fittings changed. You can see I could, I could tension the track with no problem at all. It's holding grease like crazy. Um, there are a couple of rollers that are that are kind of seized up, but hey, what are you gonna do? Again, I'm not gonna tell you what I paid for the machine, but for what I paid for the machine, I certainly am not complaining or worried about that. Another thing that was wrong with the machine, it has, or when I bought it, it had a link. Ah, where is it? It's under here somewhere. It may actually be on the other side. Oh, no, there it is, I'm staring right at it. You see this big old bolt here? Well, that right there is what you call a $100 bolt. It's a grade eight inch and a half bolt that I had to grind down to inch and a quarter because one of the uh, chain link pins had busted off, I mean, years and years and years ago for the previous owner. He had a little bolt in there and it was being held on by a really poorly done tack weld and um, it busted off and so the chain was splitting in half and that was an issue obviously and um, again the track adjuster grease fitting you can see my replacement in there that's been replaced it's holding grease just fine and this track is holding tension just fine but this is an unresolved issue right here I need to grind this bolt down a little bit further and then I'm gonna weld it on 
uh, you know, really, really strong, and it's not going to be any issue with it whatsoever. <laughs> another issue with this, oh, another issue with this machine, it's not a big issue, is kind of hard to see, but the bucket's got some wear holes right through it, and it's not a big deal. I'm just going to get some plate, weld that in there, and it'll be just as good as new. Otherwise, this bucket's in unbelievable condition. It's a gaith bucket. Gaith, gaith, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but that's fine. Pins and bushings are tight, strong, sound. Um, hydraulic cylinders. There are no issues with weeping on most of them. There's a little bit of a weep on one of the lifters. I don't know which one it is. Can't really see it anyways. It's so cold. The hydraulic fluid isn't weeping at all. Today, anyhow. Um, generally speaking, this machine is really unbelievable. For the very, I mean, bit very, of very little money. This machine is going to do everything I wanted to do here at this other property that we're clearing right now. Um, I mean, we've we've knocked some really, really big trees over. I'm talking like um, 75 foot pines. I lean right into it with this thing and you know we talk the tree into falling in this way or that way or exactly where we want it to go but uh let me take you up to take a look at that turbo i think you're gonna find this pretty interesting i make no apologies for the, the condition of the paint on this thing um in the springtime i'll probably just degrease the entire machine and uh, prime and paint it and make it look presentable. I mean, I, I'd like to take some pride in this. Now, as many of you guys know, I'm not like a total gearhead. I don't know a whole lot about the whole engine world, but I'm learning rather quickly out of necessity. And I actually quite enjoy it. But uh, I always like to do as much of everything I, that I can all by myself or you know, with help. I don't like to hire out very much at all. The muffler had lots of holes in it, and the um, exhaust pipe, the smokestack itself, needed to be replaced. It had a lot of holes and it wasn't worth repairing. So I just welded this on. I was using my, um, one of my MIG welders that um, subsequently failed, and the wire feed motor was kind of jumping not making an apology for the poor welding but I'm kind of a self-taught hack welder myself anyways but these holes have been patched just fine um, this manifold here from the turbo had a crack in it so I had to braze that fix that up now this turbo is the new turbo it's been on here for I don't know probably a few weeks now anyways and we hobbled the thing together but the thing that was uh, a bit troubling when I first got it was the fittings to connect the oil cooler um, they didn't fit so I had to make my own so I took a couple blocks of steel and I don't have a real machine shop but I've got a, a pretty capable workshop I took the steel and I, uh, I milled out the necessary holes and uh, brazed on this steel fitting here with some 40% silver solder. This top fitting here um, is the oil supply, the high pressure supply, and then I fitted that up using some brake line and some brake, brake line couplers and fittings, flared those on. And then the low pressure return down there, it's kind of hard to see it. You can see the gasket hanging out. That was similarly milled up on my uh, drill press and in my shop at home. And, okay, I don't, don't want you guys to laugh at me here, but this was a really, really tight spot down here. So I had to use the drain on the low pressure side I used a piece of half inch bendable flexible copper pipe and I used a quick connect like shark bite fitting from Lowe's 
which works absolutely fine. I mean, it's the pressure rating's totally fine, and it's it's held up just fine. There's no leak issue or anything like that. But that's my turbo story, and it has worked remarkably well. There are no issues whatsoever. I'm watching it closely. I did detect a little crack in the exhaust here, which I need to weld this up. You can see that right there. So I'll deal with that when I get around to it. But overall, this is what we affectionately refer to as E2, Excavator 2. E1 being my John Deere 690 ELC. But I'm um, standing up here on the deck, you can see we've gotten a lot of work done. There's the service truck over there. Big brush pile and down trees everywhere. And hopefully before too long, oh, there's our wood chipper. I'll do a separate video on that. But before too long, I hope to have all of this cleared out. Start making some use of this property here. So, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. Leave your comments. And uh, as always, love to have you subscribe to the channel. Have a good one. Talk to you next time.